What's up everybody? Back again with another reaction. And next up I got the top 10 optional super bosses who totally destroyed players. So I already know uh, one uh, boss that's probably going to be on this list. Uh, you know, at least it better be on the list to be something wrong with this. Uh, but I, it, it's from the channel What Culture Gaming. So I'll leave the link to the original video in the description below. So let's get it. It's sometimes great to venture off the main quest path and dive into worlds rich with fetch quests and secret caves. However, always remember this rhyme. If you go down to the optional woods today, you're in for an optional surprise. For the optional super bosses are there and willing to optionally f your sh up so hard you'll die from anal bleeding. But what's the difference between a boss and a super boss? Well, for the purpose of science, I've roped in a few friends to help with a visual demonstration. People, welcome young Peter. Young Hello. Peter. Hello, Peter. Young, I'm, I am your boss. For sake, does, let's just get this over with. Number one, the boss. So, Peter, are you ready? Are you ready? Always. Okay, I shut. Somebody open a window. Bit of a breeze there, mate. What? Is that, is that it? Yeah. Off you go. All right. Five kisses with more hit. Number two, the super boss. Okay, I, uh, I, I respect you for doing this. Um, I, I think... It, I think it's a bit crazy, a bit foolish, but I do respect you. The only thing, you might want to take this jumper off, that's the... I'm actually a bit cold, so... You you is that... Are you, are you wearing padding for this? Right, yeah. Come on, jump it off, jump it off. That's, these are expensive, you know, these aren't cheap. Sticking to you, never the disgrace. Oh! <laughs> my <ass. laughs> I felt that! As you can see, regular bosses are just mild road bumps on an otherwise smooth main story, but super bosses require you to go out of your way, complete crazy quests, or spend countless hours just to meet them and be instantly toasted. With this in mind, I'm Jules, your Southwest Savage for WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 optional super bosses who totally destroyed players. Number 10, Flemeth, Dragon Age Origins. Fans of the Dragon Age games know to expect two things. Namely, that there's going to be a buttload of quests to complete, and at some point, there will probably be dragons. Flemeth provides both, much to the surprise of many, as at first she seems to be a kindly old lady who helps you out, and even insists her daughter Morrigan go with you on your quest to cure the blight. But things aren't what they seem to be, as when you discover that Flemeth is in fact going to use her daughter as a vessel for her soul when her own body fails, and you return to confront her, you're given a choice. Either let her go in exchange for a grimoire, which sounds like the type of genre a Serbian film should be classed as, or fight her. If you choose to fight her, then she turns into a massive dragon and look at this face. This is a man who instantly regrets his decisions. The fight is truly challenging at this early stage, as she's able to nearly one-shot party members and possesses really high resistance to both magic and damage. The real issue is at this point in the game, you're going to be totally underleveled for this fight, meaning that she's probably just going to char grill you and your peasant-like armor. Number 9, Baron von Rulenstein, Donkey Kong Country 3. DK3, while being slightly worse than Diddy's Conquest in my opinion, is still a phenomenally good platformer. It strode the line between accessibility and challenge near perfectly throughout the main game. But that doesn't mean that one of its hidden bosses was anything other than an experience in anal tearing. If the player manages to collect all the cogs in Krematoa and give them to Boomer, King K. Rule, now calling himself K. Rulenstein in this version, appears in his ah. secret submarine, the Nautilus. Battling him requires perfect reaction timing and skill, and for many will be a short battle as those electric beams, objects spewing pipes, and let's not forget that side can turn you into a concrete oh my God. quickly. Now, granted, All those years ago, I never knew how to dodge that. But when you look at what players faced before, it really feels like a difficulty spike that would wreck unsuspecting players. Number 8, Adam Antoys, Final Fantasy XV. See now, here's the thing, I've not actually played Final Fantasy XV. I will, I promise. But I know somebody who has, and who has a very personal and quite depressing tale about the game. This is young Ben. Now. We're going to talk now about Adamantois, the living mountain, and it gave you quite some grief, didn't it? Yeah. Now, this is a safe space. I want you to trust me and trust the audience. 
and in your own words and in your own time, tell us what happened. Okay, so when you finish this f***ing game, right, it gives you an optional uh, hunt. I think it's called a hunt. It doesn't matter, it doesn't feel like a f***ing hunt because you don't have to go hunting for it. It's a f***ing mountain, right? You go near it and the mountain grows legs. It's a massive f***ing turtle. Tortoise, sorry. I don't know if that's racist to tortoises or turtles, but f*** them. After this fight, it's two, two literal hours. Two hours of Damn. real world hours. That's two, two hours, hours, Jules. Two. Two hours, right, that you fight this thing, it's not hard, it can't hurt you, really, your party's useless, you just phase strike it again and again, and it's, it's <laughs> Now, to me, I had a bit of an issue with this, because when I initially hadn't properly strategized, right, I was stuck there fighting this <laughs> thing for two and a half hours, I'm struggling to speak, it's like, two and a half hours, right, and uh, is it playing now? Are we, are they seeing it? Are they seeing what's happening? Okay, right, you see this, see this bullshit? big giant glitchy fucking blob attached to a mountain, spins around, sends me flying way out of the fucking area, ends the hunt, no XP, the life bar reset, two and a half hours. Two and a half fucking hours. Thank you, Ben. Okay, I'm not doing that when I beat the Reaper. Persona 4 Gold. So, I'm pretty much brand new to this series, but thanks to Ben and his unyielding love for all things Weeby, I'm now deeply ingrained in Persona 4 Golden. I don't know how to describe this game other than telling you how it makes me feel. It makes me feel good. Like, really, really good. Like, Velvet Enema good. I adore the characters, find the combat super refreshing even when I'm grinding more than a coffee-obsessed college girl at the weekend, and the old-school RPG elements found throughout are sublime. However, it was my obsession with exploration that led to my very untimely demise. So I was traipsing through one of the many mental dungeons and was looking for every bit of treasure I could find. Then something really strange happened. I distinctly heard the sounds of chains. Now despite being in a TV dream world with a talking teddy bear and using poker minds to defeat enemies, this was a very weird experience. It turns out that by opening 21 chests, I'd unleashed something very, very bad. Like spiked mace enema bad. When I approached another chest, I was told an intensely terrifying presence was in the box. See, upon reading the description for that box, I thought to myself there could be only one of two things inside there. Either it's going to be my search history, or it could be, I don't know, this guy? The Grim Reaper, the harvester of souls and punisher of the greedy. My shit was totally pushed fighting this beast. And it turns out that in the original Persona 4, you could only fight him in a second playthrough, but in Golden, he was able to be fought right off the bat. <laughs> You're welcome, right? Number six, Reptile, Mortal Kombat. Sometimes people seek Reptile. Gimps and BDSM who excessively tattoo or pierce anyone who attends a Kevin James stand-up show. God knows why they do it, but clearly gamers too love a bit of self-annihilation, as anyone who tried to beat Reptile in Mortal Kombat 1 can tell you. The journey to this fight is ridiculous enough, with you having to get two flawless victories without blocking and then performing a fatality. You also need to be playing on the pit stage, and an object needs to be flying past the moon on the stage, which only happens once every six rounds. <sighs> so let's assume you've done all that. I mean, I definitely didn't, but let's just say you did. Your reward for all of this tiresome and stressful work was a one-on-one -on -one round with a creature in a match which felt like Conor McGregor with laser-guarded fists going up against a prematurely born baby with a target on its yet-to-close fontanelle. Number five. Doolahan. A super hard boss from an extremely super game, Big D puts the OW oh, MY F***ING SPINE into difficult. And yeah, I know that's not how you spell it, but that's because Sunny D knocked the letters out of existence with one of its four actions per turn, which is nearly unheard of in the game. This headless suit of armor guards the summon tablet, which lets you use the iris summons. So trust me, it's a thing worth trying to get. But as before mentioned, this chap is standing in the way. Looking like he'd be called Steroid Knight if he was in a Yacht Club game, Dilly D Dilliams has the highest stat bar for any enemy in the game, plus he can restore his health after each turn. He is literal hot tits. He's so hard that if you play the game on hard mode, he's one of the two enemies which doesn't get their stats buffed by 1.5. Because the game literally can't go that high. He is that tough. Number four, Sephiroth. Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts is just such a lovely game. It's weird for sure, but once you get over the thought of Mickey Mouse hacking down enemies with a keyblade... How is it optional? I thought Sephiroth was... The difficulty is pretty appropriate hey. as well, slowly ramping up towards the end boss. But along this curve of challenge is a spike so hard and so tall, you'd think you were looking at my groin. That spike is the one-winged angel himself, Sephiroth. 
Found in the Hercules inspired challenge arena, this silver haired monster of a man is a true challenge. His attacks are lightning fast and his health appears to degrade slower than erosion for all the damage you seek to do. He can teleport, cast Ultima which will ruin anyone's day and he's also got a move that takes you down to 1 HP and 0 MP. This battle requires pitch perfect that's no, and yeah, That's no surprise considering how hard he was in Final Fantasy 7. Number 3, Cartoon Pre-Patch, World of Warcraft. When you need to have the developers patch your attributes because players can't actually beat you, then you know you deserve to be on this list. Cthun or Cthun is just such a bastard, and his giant eye definitely was witness to many players' deaths at his hand. Or tentacles, as it should be. I've not got much to say about this wrecker of raids other than if you were unlucky enough to encounter him before the hotfixes, you'd have less chance of beating him than winning the lottery by claiming a used maxi pad as your ticket. Number 2, Kangax, Boulder's Gate 2. Boulder's Gate 2 is a phenomenally good oh tournament from my youth, and I've spent more hours on it number one is gonna be. one box, which always came up behind me, put its hands on my hip, took a deep breath, and just really leapfrogged over me in terms of skill, is Kangax. This is a twist. Is able to fight once you collected all of his body parts, and once you'd slotted the last pelvis in place, all manner of bad times is unleashed. Kangax possesses rapid health regen and outstandingly high defense, and when he switches to his second form becomes almost invulnerable to physical attacks. In fact, the only way to hurt him is with weapons with a plus four enchantment or higher, which at this point in the game you've probably only got about two of his caliber. As a result, many a party was pooped on by this guy's ridiculous offense. And number one, the Black Rabbit, Saiken Densetsu 3. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking that this Black Rabbit would be a pushover. I mean, just look at some of the things you've defeated in the run-up to this moment. And I mean, for God's sake, it's just a rabbi, the type of enemy that even Gandhi with a protractor can kill. But this Black Bunny means business, conjuring up images of Monty Python and the Holy Grail as it decimates your party with strong attacks and magic. If that wasn't enough, then it can summon help in the form of demons at level 99 and can turn your weapons to dark ones, which heal him. So what do you get oh. for beating this bastard bunny? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, apart from the self-worth you get for beating a difficult baddie, but where has self-worth ever gotten me, right? And that's our list. Got any more optional super bosses which made you weep like a little babby? Well, let me know about them in the comments below. And why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and daily articles every goddamn day. As always, I've been Jules. You can follow me here on Twitter at RetroJ0, and I'll speak to you soon. I got one that wasn't on the list. Oh, hello there. I'm billionaire philanthropist, not Bruce Wayne. And as you may have heard, we've actually started up a What Culture Comics channel. Oh, that's better. Where you can go for all the comics lists, all the comics news, and all the comics discussion. So go on, go and subscribe to What Culture Comics for loads of amazing comics coverage. Hmm. That's pretty cool. And I, I had a, a optional super buff that wasn't on the list that, that was a nightmare. I don't think I ever beat him. I, was it Clue, I think it's Cluix from a Super Mario RPG? Oh my. God, so because uh, apparently there's there's a secret you know door or whatever in uh, one of the towns, and once you unlock the door, you, you go fight this uh, super boss Cluix, which is a, a character from uh, Final Fantasy, which is no surprise considering that Square actually helped make the game to begin with. So, but I uh, yeah, they, that boss. Between him and, and the actual final boss, Smithy, oh my god, that was a nightmare. But, uh, anyway, so yeah, leave a comment down below. Let me know what y'all thought. And if you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks.